Awesome. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Java and the Librarians. This is episode five, and today we'll be discussing our thoughts and opinions on The Fill-In Boyfriend by Casey West. I'm Erica. I run a blog called Howie-YA, and I'm a young adult librarian. And I am Julie. I run Pages and Pens, which is a booktube channel, and just hang out with my bookish friends there. I am also the uh, creator and operator of the Facebook Buddy Read group where a lot of our readers come from. So, to give you a quick rundown of the fill-in boyfriend, this is about a girl named Gia who is getting ready to go to her senior prom, and on the parking lot, her boyfriend does this really douchebag move, and he breaks up with her <laughs> before they go into prom. So, she's devastated and miserable. She sees this other guy in the parking lot, and basically, she begs him to be her date for prom, and it just takes off from there. So, what did you think about the book? <laughs> yeah um i know <laughs> hold on i just want to throw the uh link out into the buddy regroup really quick but i i struggled with this book i think i i struggle with contemporary in general like i try to do good with it but it's really not my thing so i kind of didn't think i was gonna love it i thought parts of it uh were parts of it cute not really no they weren't no. um <laughs> I wanted more. I expected more. I had read By Your Side by her, and it wasn't, like, an amazing read, but it had some, like, meat to it. Like, there was at least some depth there. There was, like, some character depth that, like, mattered to me. And there wasn't any of that in this one. And, um, yeah, I actually was kind of like, maybe she's just not my author. And then I read another book by her after that, after the fill-in boyfriend that I liked a lot better. But I... I struggled with this one. I don't want to get into it like too, too much without like Lauren and everybody else here, but yeah. um, it was a three star read for me. And I was essentially just really let down by some of the plot devices that the author used. I was annoyed with our protagonist. I was annoyed with um, pretty much everybody. I was annoyed, yeah, I was annoyed with everybody, and I was really, like, deeply angered by Jules. I, I think because, A, she sullied my name, and B, I just am over that whole, like, plot device where there's, like, the jealous girl who's out to get you. and Like, why? <sighs> Girls have enough problems. We don't need to be, like, pitted against each other all the time. Like, I just, I didn't get it. Like, in what world does that happen? None. In no world. Like, I thought it was very, like, Mean Girls meets, like, just everything I hate. Yeah, that's exactly how I felt. It was just so, like, I normally read, when I do get to contemporary, it's mostly adult. I yeah. guess because it's more ma mature for me. It's more relatable. Mm -hmm. And with um, with this teenage high school setting. So the whole time, I'm like, no. Nah. No, you don't. That's how I was the whole time with the book. And the yeah. whole clickish things, that's just not my cup of tea. And the fact that she was looking for validation from everybody, that was a big turnoff as well. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it didn't, and I hate it the way it ended too. Like the whole thing, it just, it didn't even have any, it didn't crescendo whatsoever in the book. No. So. It it didn't. It really didn't. Um, I, I got another point that oh, was your um, live stream muted? No. On YouTube? I'm hearing something come back again. No, I don't have it up. Oh, you don't have it up for the chat room? No. Oh, I'm hearing everything repeat. Anyway, as long as it's just me. Um, I get really frustrated too as the oldest of like four girls when sibling relationships are portrayed that negatively i just like the whole the whole issue with her brother and like how everything went down there like just it really got to me because i just think that from like a family standpoint it's just so not okay it's not okay with me i get annoyed when like family dynamics are messed with to that dramatic of an effect like no parent is like oh it's it's okay it's his creative expression it's all right like like you have to have like douchey friends douchey parents a douchey brother so that like the only person this girl has is the like misfit and her 
love interest. Like, I just know. Yeah. None of that was, wasn't even part relatable or real. Uh-uh. Air quotes, <laughs> real. No. no. And I felt like even the main character and her love interest, they were alike as well because he had douchebag friends as well. And he was looking for validation from his friends too. So there was, they were kind of, you know, learning from each other in the sense they would both mm-hmm. give each other a- advice and answers and stuff, but they wasn't taking their own advice and answers mm-hmm. with that. But I don't know, this book just wasn't for me. <laughs> it wasn't for no. me. And I understand the like the the social lesson and the the moral lesson she learned, and she's a better person now and personal growth. But like, come on, like, I didn't um I didn't relate to this, and I really I did want to, and especially because I read this one later in the month than I usually do. I usually read the book club books like the first or second day of the month, and then I mm-hmm. just wait until the live show. So for this one, I knew I was going to read only contemporaries. This entire month, I've read only contemporaries. So I waited until closer to the live show to read it, knowing that hopefully that would help me stay more on track of like remembering what happened in this particular one. And that gave me a lot of time to read other contemporaries before this one and <laughs> yeah. start to like form opinions of what I wanted and what I expected in a contemporary also kind of gave me time to get burnt out on contemporaries a little. So by the time it came to this one, I had no patience for the stuff that was happening. It just, yeah. And, and it also gave time for people in our buddy read group to read it and then post how glad they were that they read it and how they really don't read contemporaries, but they enjoyed this one. So Knowing that, I was like, oh, that's awesome. These people are really, you know, like, everybody else seems to be really enjoying it. And then I got to it, and I was like, really? I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't get it. Oh, hey, that's guys. How- so I finally got home from work. I'm currently on my phone doing this, and it's time to hopefully catch up with you guys. Sorry for being late. Here, cool. That's fine. I know she she had pneumonia, so she sounds. <laughs> oh, well, I can't hear yeah, her. I she's... sound a little. So yeah. I sound a little crazy right now because of, yeah, the the pneumonia. Is this any better at all, Julie? Yeah. Probably. Okay, fantastic. So I think we're doing better. What is the verdict on the book so far? <laughs> we both not liking it. <laughs> we don't like it. Mm-mm. And I, I've been waiting all month to get your rating on this, Lauren, because we're usually the most different when it comes to the ratings on the book. So yeah, I was like, I gotta wait and see. I gotta wait and see what Lauren totally thinks. Totally are. And <laughs> I thought it was so middle of the road. Like I was not happy with the book, like at all. I, I mean, like I get that you all are supposed to be high schoolers, but good freaking god. Stop being so dramatic about everything. Yeah. I just think, too, that I, that contemporary readers in general expect more now from their authors. And this book isn't that old. I think it was, like, in 20, a 2015 release. Mm-hmm. And I just – I don't think that anybody believes that high schoolers are still, A, that completely naive and unaware – of like the influence of social media and social Mm -hmm. proof or that anybody does that quick of like a moral turnaround. Like I just, yes. It did happen pretty quick. It happens super quick. And I know that kids in general are really obsessed with social media. And I understand that Instagram and likes and, and yes, it's completely valid that if you don't get enough likes on something, you'll just delete it. And I understand Mm -hmm. that that, I'm not saying that that's inaccurate. I'm just saying that it's very rare to find kids that are so deeply unaware of that fact. Like, I think that you can give kids a little bit more credit than that. Yeah. And it's such, you know, it's like, it's, it's not, I don't want to use the word stereotyping, but like you just stereotyping that particular group. Like yeah. you said, they're not like that anymore. 
And I feel like with a lot of YA contemporaries, a lot of them are like this, especially when you read books about high school settings, you have the good girl, but she's trying to look for acceptance from everybody, but she has the best friend who like her, but doesn't really like her because she's jealous of her. And it's just not, things have changed a lot. And I think yeah. a lot of YA contemporary authors are a little bit you know, older than age, and I guess, they're trying to stay with that scene because it's how it probably used to be. And it's so far from that. Got you. I'm looking in the chat room really quick while Everybody Lauren sets up. friends this book were just oh, awful. They were I awful. Hate. What she was? Everybody's yeah, friends like were awful. Everybody. Like there was not exactly. a single likable friend at all in this book. Just, I wanted awful. to slap everybody. They're awful. I asked Angela who we have to throat punch because she's our throat puncher. She didn't read the book. She's just coming to crash the party. Oh. Um, but she Angela, said Jules. I think we can all agree so that Jules needs throat... to get throat punched. Yeah, I mean, I I need Angela to read this book now so she can go throat punch people for us. She will throat I mean, punch I think a everybody. Lot of people be throat punched. Everybody in this book, even the parents, are, everybody can get throat yeah. punched. Yeah. No, I can't handle Except it. Except for Hayden's parents. They were cute. Yeah, um, except for maybe Hayden as well, in my opinion, because he wasn't awful. No, he, he wasn't was, awful. He was, uh, you know what, the best description I could think of for Hayden was a description I read for uh, Lori from Little Women. And it's that he's not a likable, he's not, he's not a great guy. He's not a cute guy. He's just a nice guy. That's what's sad is to me that is totally Hayden. Mm -hmm. I um, Elle Smith said I can't believe that their mother didn't have a problem with the brother when he did that. Was a dick and move. they were just like sitting there and just there's no way. Basically, like there's a reason why. Well, basically, it's true. What your brother did was true, but you know they still had. I felt like they were just trying to keep up this charade of their trying to be perfect and be their kids mm -hmm. friends instead of basically telling them when they're doing something wrong. Because even when um, Gia went to her mom and confronted her when she snapped at her earlier today, it was some kind of, you know, thing they had where like, okay, we're not going to be perfect. It's okay to get upset and whatnot. But with their bro with her brother, she didn't even, it was a dad too. They just was like, they both. Hate her two oh, but, yeah, we're proud of him. We hope you can be too at some point. It's like, dude, no. But that's not even the right. He was purposely even... hurtful. He was just mean yeah. and malicious and purposely hurtful and mm -mm. was completely and utterly unapologetic about it. And they're like, it's fine. It's fine. He made a brilliant movie. He's social commentary. Awful. We're proud of him. Okay, Absolutely fine. Awful. It might be social commentary. And be and fine. Be proud of him for making this social commentary movie at what? Eighteen. But that said, mm -hmm. how about you be pissed at your son for being so malicious to your other child? Mm -hmm. Nope. How about be a good parent? There was nothing ever. Sorry, all right. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm reading comments. Too. I am too. <laughs> I'm like I'm reading the comments too. Um. Yeah, yeah I it. Just Elsma said Gia did not fight for her friends. She was just like, I can try again with Claire next year. I feel like she just need to let that go. Because like yeah. if I was Claire and I see that my other friend is basically out trying to sabotage another good friend of mine, there should be some kind of point where you say, Okay, hey, what's going on between you two? But obviously they just don't have it was just who likes who better? Who is the leader? Who can I get more out of with this? And I hate the fact that Gia couldn't really see that with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I got frustrated because that entire clip was a popularity contest. Yeah. And that pissed me off so badly because every time I would read about that group, I'm like, why don't you guys, you're supposed to be friends. Why don't you behave like friends? Not who's the coolest? Who's, who wants to go surfing? Fine. Be cool with the fact that your friend doesn't serve. They don't serve. Why don't you go serve, tell them how great it was, and then they'll go tell you about the poetry slam that they went to or, you know, something. <laughs> like, your friends, 
the entire point is to be different and to celebrate each other's and holy shit, people. <laughs> I agree. And everybody about that. Everybody's commenting and saying that the same thing that all of her friends were really horrible. And I think that that's why the resolution of that whole issue was like fine with me that she said they could get different roommates. They didn't have to room together because at the end of the day, she was better off starting off with people that actually like knew and understood her. And I just, I don't think that that was like people that she needed to fight to have in her life because they, yeah. there's no way that you were that. Yeah, ignorant I was just saying to what, going, good. Get different groups. Yeah. You don't need No, them. you're not that ignorant to what Gia was trying to do. There's no way that you're that naive and you don't see what she's trying to do. And the fact that none yeah. of them also put their foot down and said, like, enough's enough. We, we're, like, we're done with this, like, back and forth was pretty ridiculous. So, and again, that's another one of those things where I don't think the author gave teenage girls enough credit. Like, yeah. that doesn't happen like you're they're spending all this time together there's no way for them to not see what's really going on like what the undercurrent of that situation was and i just think that that's like you're treating the readers like idiots and you're treating your characters like idiots and i don't mm -hmm. think that's okay yeah you know the what? Fact that you... go, go ahead oh i 100 percent agree i mean i will give the author that maybe she doesn't understand social media or maybe, like us, she grew up in the 90s and didn't quite have social media. And, you know, and that's what she remembers as her teenage years. And so that's maybe influ is what influenced that part of it. But still, even without social media, even or even with social media, however you want to look at it, idiots, they're bitchy. I mean, mm -hmm. as somebody who survived the teenage years as a female, teenage girls are bitches. But that said, they're not idiots. And you're right. You know, the way she wrote, all of her characters are idiots. Apparently, they don't understand social media, despite growing up in the 2000 teens. And they don't understand social mores, again, despite being teenage females that are growing up in the 2000 teens. And then she expects us to be as stupid as that. Yeah. yeah. What did you guys think about, because here's the thing, like, at the very least, we were supposed to like the main character, right? Mm -hmm. But what were your thoughts on Gia specifically, like, outside of her friend group, and but, like, her and her character arc specifically? She, I feel like she just was this shallow, insecure person. The fact that she had to, because he opened up with her, like, a boyfriend, mm -hmm. when he broke up with her, he was basically saying the first thing she said when he saw her was my friends are going to be jealous or something like that the fact that she had to prove that she even was dating somebody showed her insecurities as well and i don't and then the quick turnaround that she did that was just she really didn't have anything to say okay i need to just get my life together with this i felt like that was just rushed too much and she didn't have I just, I just, I did not like her from the beginning to the end. I really didn't like any of the characters. I think the only character that I liked was probably the sister and his mom. That was, yeah. Yeah. The chat room saying that Gia used her friends. Well, go ahead. No, you go ahead. I, I, mine fucking hold. Oh. <laughs> the chat room was saying that Gia used her friends to get her ready for dates, but wouldn't talk to them. Um, or really let them get to know her, that she, uh, Bookish Taylor says she grew into a decent human being, but her friends were too stuck up to grow up too. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, did she though? Gia, Gia was annoying, but I like that she went from being really shallow to realizing that she could become a better person. She, she had growth, but it was, it was so like predictably awful. It, it was. And that's like why I can't even. It didn't feel genuine. It felt so contrived that I can't yeah, even. And, and I, like I can't even get behind. Like oh, she grew. It's like no, it was still so poorly written. Yeah, I felt like it was just forced, and yeah. it's just it wasn't any. It's just I, I, I don't know. It wasn't. I know it's fiction, but it wasn't. It's so believable. Looking for. It wasn't yeah. good fiction. It wasn't good fiction. It wasn't believable fiction. Like, I can suspend reality when it's a fantasy book, but, like, you set this. This is supposed to be something that 
could happen that like we could see ourselves in characters or that we could relate to there was nothing about this story that i could be like oh yeah, yeah she I, was so one dimensional i couldn't even suspend my reality oh. during contemporary fiction because it's not like i grew up in california i grew up in freaking ohio i mean i love ohio yeah i mean like I mean, location is like location I like i don't care you know i could substitute surfing with you know hanging out at the park i don't know like i that to me is not even the thing the other thing was I'm like sitting here and I'm like oh god they're all like on social media and looking for like Twitter shares and Instagram likes in high school and I was like I didn't have a cell phone until I was in college and it didn't text so I don't know <laughs> yeah <laughs> I was like god it's so old but even still I just I think that teens now have to be so much more self-aware like i don't know there's this weird like mix of how i see teens now but i just don't think that it, casey west gave them enough credit like it was just not not okay yeah and by the way are we saying her name casey or cassie i say casey casey i think is her name that's what i've heard everybody else say is casey well sorry there's one I of think... those things where like i knew kids when you know in undergrad and in high school that spelled their name like that but, like, a couple of the girls would call themselves Casey, and other girls would call themselves Cassie. So I'm like, I am so confused by this name right now. I think two S's I would say Cassie, but one S I'm going Casey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, That's fair. I probably would butcher this name. Jovita said, this is the second book by Casey West that I read. I can honestly say that I probably will not read another book by her for a while. I don't what was think the other one? I'm in the same boat. Exact same boat. First yeah. book I've ever read by her. Um, and um, I'm kind of done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I read By Your Side for um, a book, re a reading challenge. And I like, it was okay. I didn't love it, but it was okay. And then I, we read this one. I hated it. But then after this one, I read P.S. I Like You. And I actually really liked that one. <laughs> but from what I hear, that's like everybody's other favorite one. And... Mm. I think that that's probably like her best work. So I don't think I'll read anything else by her, but I ended up really actually liking PS. I like you. So if you wanted to give her one more shot, maybe give that one a try, but don't expect all of her work to be like that. Cause I don't think it will be. By publication date, how early had, did she write this book? This one I think is 2015 and she had like three or four before this, I think. Okay. At least. So I was going to like, at least get a benefit of the doubt. Maybe this is just one of her earlier works. And this is her fifth one. No, that's okay, then. <laughs> yeah, this is book number oh, five. Oh, so I did get a message from a friend about this, and they were asking, do you guys think that there is any likable character, or maybe a better way to rephrase that is, since we probably don't think that there are likable characters, were there was there at least a character in the book that you liked? Bex. Yeah, I was okay with Bex. And, and Hayden's yeah. mom. But more so Bex. Yeah. Bex I like fantastic. how she was unapologetic. And she was just she was probably the realest person out of the whole book. Cause didn't she say too that she used to be like a cheerleader? Like she used to be like one of the popular ones and then she was just mm -hmm. like tired of it. Yeah. So maybe they all just have something in, in common in that girl. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, L. Smith, it was baseballs. They threw baseballs at a car. Yeah. But yeah, that was ridiculous. So that was and the now, other like, thing that I'm I was going to That wasn't my teenage years. Oh, what? please. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I threw shit at, at stuff. I mean, I never paid some old guy $20 to go throw stuff at his stuff, but I threw stuff no. at things. See, I did not. I was, um, I was like, I grew up with, like, I was the oldest kid, and at, since my parents divorced, I always was like, always heard. Now make sure you're taking care of your younger siblings <laughs> to the point that my brother and sister and exes of theirs would jokingly call me Mama Lauren. I'm like, Christ. <laughs> oh, I was trouble. Yeah, it was. Someone, oh, where you go? Where you go? Booker started said, I like her writing because it's easy to get into and it was fun writing style. Like super easy to read and easy to get into. It was. I read it in a day, and it really was easy to get into. But I, I didn't really. I didn't like her, her writing. Here's the thing, though. Like I've read contemporaries. I think, read, read. I think I probably got through it in maybe three, and that was reading at night. 
Yeah. It's not, it, it wasn't difficult to read, but I've also read other contemporaries that were also like quick, fun, easy reads that were better written. So mm. for me, there's a difference between like an easy read and like a good one. And there are easy, good reads. Like this mm. just wasn't one of them. So speaking of throwing stuff at cars though, this, <laughs> I could not get over how that one scene when they're in the the Camaro, like in the rusted out car. And I felt like I was missing something so serious because in terms of like when they go to his ex-girl, when they go to Hayden's ex-girlfriend's party and there's like that sexual like tension moment on the beach as they're mm -hmm. like messing around, like not messing around, but the, as they're like talking, I could at least like kind of get the sexual tension there. But why in the world was there such a drawn out scene about like a rusted out car with leaves and dirt and her trying to climb over him and ripping her whatever she was wearing? Like it was the least tension filled scene I've ever read. And I know that it was supposed to be something more than that. So did I miss something? Like, did you guys get no. some kind of like... Ten, like no. sexual tension or like attraction in that scene because I got Not nothing. Not no. No. Okay. I was like, I'm missing something, but I don't think there's <laughs> anything at all in this scene. What you were missing was a well written scene that actually conveyed <laughs> what the author wanted it to convey. Yeah. But we didn't get that, so yeah. No. Lauren, what did you rate it? I think I gave it three stars on on Goodreads just because I'm like, well, it was easy and I got through it. And there were maybe two characters I liked, but I think it's probably closer to a two and a half. I mean, it's just, oh, good God. I mean, I, I just so did not like <laughs> the book and I suggested it. I mean, oh, my God. Yeah. And then someone else mentioned that they felt like bail. it was finished. And I definitely felt like that. It's like the turnaround point that she had was rushed. A little bit of, you know, the middle part was rushed for me. And especially the ending was rushed. Like the whole thing was, yeah. just, you know, rushed. So I think there was a there was way too much build up to any kind of like actual change in her and like actually confronting her friends and being found out for this lie and then between being found out for the lie and the conclusion where she's made this 180 in personality and totally fine with losing her friends and I'm just going to go to school and continue to do what I want to do because I don't need them like you have this really stagnant build up until this action and then between the action and the ending where there's this giant character change there was like no there was no book left there there was like 20 pages mm -hmm. yeah like i'm reading it and i mean at the end I, I just kept looking at the book going what the hell because it's like she had this impressive life change to say the least mm -hmm. for an 18 year old 17 year old whatever she was to going from i really need these people they're my best friends i've known them since i was three too you know what? Screw you all. I don't need you. Get the, get the hell out of my life. Who goes through that kind of life change in three weeks? Yeah. And then, not just that, but nobody else made any life changes. And I'm like, you all are <laughs> confronted. You are all confronted with this just sheer amount of shame. Just, you realize your friend has lied. You, you know, you see her making an effort to go surfing with you. You see this guy that's actually treating her right. And you do nothing. Nothing. Be better people. Just be better people. Make better life choices. And just do better. Yeah. yeah. And she kept taking the blame for not trying with Jules. And then her friend Claire didn't, you know, step in and be like, No. It's a two way thing with um, Jules as well. Like, Gia would always try, air quote, try. And no jewels it's just like it's claire was just as just as bad in this situation they were l smith said that the book should have been about hayden and his ex-girlfriend and it should have ended when he met gia in the parking lot i think that would have worked out good i'd have read that 
That would have been a more yeah. story. I would have read that. I don't know if I would have liked it if she wrote it, but I would have read it. Um, yeah. I, and I think one of the other things that that bothers me in hindsight, looking back at this story, and I don't want to be one of those people that like finds problem problematic themes in every book, and I don't like. I'm not that person. Um, big things. I'm going to start with the smaller one because I don't think it's going to broker as much discussion, and then we can move on to the bigger theme you've pretty much got Gia who now has nobody left in her life except for this guy and his sister that she changed for and because of. Mm -hmm. And he has nobody left. So now you're like, it's literally the most unhealthy relationship now because they only have each other. Like they now have no lives outside of the two of them. So they went from being like, yes, granted, they had really messed up friends. They've got like a like, weird codependent Stockholm syndrome. Exactly. Thing. And one good friend to have a life outside of this relationship. Like that's not a healthy model for people to look at either. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey guys. I, can... I don't know if anybody else caught that, but it no, I didn't. Yeah, but now I, that I... you mentioned it, yeah. Like, now that you mentioned it, like I'm running through the entire story and through my head and I'm like Oh God, no! They they really yeah. Because Gia doesn't even have her family. Like she's still kind of pissed at her brother. Her parents are still really like uninvolved. So you've got Hayden and his sister and their parents. So they have like each other in this like unit. But other than that, Gia has nobody but literally them and their whole family, which is not like a healthy place for a girl to be when she's starting a relationship. Yeah, the longevity of it is probably you know going to be down. Yeah, I'm kind of hoping that when she goes to college, granted, I think she's a bland, bland character, but I'm kind of hoping that when she goes to college, maybe she'll make a couple friends there that give her a life outside of everything, or she takes classes that exposes her to something else or something. I mean, don't get but me wrong. But he, he's person- going to, he was going to the same college as she was. I think he was going to. I think he was starting off at, at community college and then potentially transferring. Okay. Because I don't think he could afford to start there. Because that was like the whole other thing. Like, not everybody has a scholarship. Not everybody can go to UCLA. Yeah. So well, fingers crossed that they're not in all the same glasses together. That they're not that kind. Honestly, <laughs> I'm surprised that you gave it enough thought to think about what might have happened when they got to college because as soon as I was done this book, I forgot about them until this morning when I reminded myself. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> I told Julie, <laughs> I, the, the, I started it this morning. Only came to mind after you mentioned the co- oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I just don't, I don't think that's like a healthy way to leave her as a character. Like, you, oh, by the way, you have nobody except for this new guy and his family. Yeah. What was your other... And that is ever friend. Yeah. Hmm. What was your other... You said you had some more? I do. I've got one other point. Um, Sorry. They're asking in the chat room, the next book, guys, is going to be The Long Way to a Small and Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. Um, My other point was, after reading a ton of contemporary this month, I noticed that um, this is, like, the only book that I read this month that I can remember at least unless I'm recalling something wrong that has no characters of color queer characters like nothing no diversity there's no diversity oh my god you're right because like not all (laughs) yeah I don't think I've read anything like that because I mean well no not that every book has to be like chock full of it but literally nothing zero Zero, because I'm you're in California. Them. You're gonna tell me that there's no <laughs> like diversity kid or at gay all. Kid like, there's no one. You can yeah. find something because I read. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I read something for my LGBT book club that's got gay kids in it, and I've been reading a book called Vienna Nocturne, which has, you know, it's about an English soprano opera star. But it's taking place in Europe, and where she's traveling, she's dealing with at least different ethnicities. Like, she's going through the courts of Europe, so that's something different that she's dealing with. Different cultures, ethnicities, that sort of thing. But this book didn't even have that. 
Yeah. Um, they're pointing out in the chat room that I was wrong. Claire was Asian. There was yeah. one Asian person. <laughs> You're right. And I and that's what but like I remember now. It it was that few and far between that like it felt like none. Like I'm sorry, but you have like this cast of characters and there there's one one Asian, like one diverse character. I don't know. Yeah. It's like you were always just in Gia's head. And I think it was mentioned once. Like, I think she mentioned her being Asian once. I think she referenced her hair. Her hair. When she was like, I can't go surfing. My hair will be crazy. And she was like, I go surfing all the time. My hair's fine. She was like, it's because you've got that great Asian hair. It was like that one time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we wouldn't have known if she didn't say anything about her hair. No, not at all. I don't know. I think we all have <laughs> the same opinions with this book. It's just, I don't want to say horrible yeah. because I understand, you know, I'm not an author, but I understand the time and the work and the effort that you put in writing a book. But this one just was not, was not getting it at all. <laughs> and said, guys, to be man, honest, I think no. I hated this one more than I hated Save Me the Waltz. Don't say it because that's wrong. No, that's yeah, incorrect. Now this was that's I would read bull. this ten times more than I will read Saving the Walls. I would read only this for the rest of my life over reading that one one more time. <laughs> that book was horrible. No, now no, I really just sorry. throw everything I just said out the window. <laughs> this book was horrible. <laughs> um, what did they say? Bookish Taylor said this book needed a lot more than just diversity. Amanda said in California, this does not make sense at all. Mm -mm. Um, didn't she say she went to a huge school and that all those people in that school she was the only friends with two people yeah those two people apparently the popular clique is very small now um, yeah I want to know how the popular clique in California has no gay kids though like really yeah I don't I mean I don't know that's what I'm saying there was nothing it was just it was just nothing believable about this story now, I will say, in 2015, in YA literature, having, like, sexual diversity in these books was less, like, like people expect that now. Um, it, there was probably less of it in 2015, but it's still there. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Everybody's saying that Bex looks like either somebody who would be in a biracial relationship or a lesbian. Everybody's really pissed that the one quirky out there girl that was not the one they chose to have <laughs> a scandalous romance. Uh, but yeah, I don't... Chelsea needs to destroy this book in the pool. It, <laughs> I, I mean, it was bad. Here's the thing. I gave it three stars because I read... Um, a lot of other contemporaries this month that were way worse than this. Like they were, they were not good. So this one, like I didn't, I didn't like the characters. I didn't like some of the plot, like tools that the author used. And I, I, I had issues with the ending and a lot, but like, I, I get it. Like I can see how somebody would read this and enjoy it. I can especially see how somebody would read this, enjoy it if they were more of a casual reader than a lot of us in this like book club are like we read a lot. So we have a lot to compare things to and we have a higher standard for what we particularly enjoy in books. When you read like one book a month, then like the books all kind of like, yeah, it's fine. It was, it was fine. But when you're reading 20 books a month and th this one stands out as being pretty poor, so I get it. Like I can see how somebody would enjoy it, which is why I didn't give it lower than a three. Yeah. But it, I, I will be unhauling this or gifting it to somebody mm -hmm. else because I will never read this again. Yeah, it's kind of like just those filler books where you don't really have anything else to read, but you just want to have something just light and fluffy after maybe a fantasy or a complex mm -hmm. science. Fiction. Or you're like stuck in the hospital and you're just bored out of your mind. <laughs> exactly, something like that. This is probably when I'll pick up the book. But I would have enjoyed this a whole lot more if I had like a morphine button. I'd have been fine with it. <laughs> I know, right? Just sitting there going, oh, God, what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> oh, God. Okay, this fine, Gia, right? she's cracking me up. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was reading it at work, and one of my coworkers, she's asking me what I think about it because she's a big contemporary fan. And I was like, mm. you know, she's like, yeah, this isn't one of her best works and stuff. It's like I'm seeing a lot more of that because I hear a lot of mixed reviews about this book. But everybody seemed to lean more towards the 
unhaul it <laughs> side of it. But yeah. like I said, in the buddy read group, I saw a lot of people that really liked the book, even though they didn't read contemporary a lot, they really liked it. I agree. Elle Smith was talking about Gia's mom and how controlling she was and how completely passive the father was. Like he never had anything to say. <laughs> yeah. It was, I don't know. It, that bothered me. Bookish Taylor saying that too. Like if, if one of my siblings had done something like to, that to me, plus this also like goes back to just, I mean, at some point, she knows this is all going to blow up on her. And then when he walks in with like real Bradley instead of fill in Bradley and everybody's like, I told you like you knew that was coming. Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. It was a big build up for just, it was bad guys. It was just bad. I'm sorry. I'm glad if, if you read this and you super enjoyed it, then like, I'm really glad that we didn't make you read a book. You hate it, but I did yeah. not like it. Me, me neither. It's just, but at the same time, I'm totally unapologetic if you hated this book, because maybe then it's going to add to the discussion, and you can just come vent with us and be part of the dark side. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Like whenever I see a book with low ratings, or a lot of people, or mixed reviews, over that, I like that because it gives you something to talk about, different viewpoints different you know opinions and when i that's cool. i like i like them, at least for a good discussion i agree Let's see. I'm looking I, at the everybody's comments. like okay well give me good, good give me good contemporary recommendations then um so if you're looking for contemporaries you want to give them a shot and you want to try to see you know better contemporaries please read the upside of unrequited by becky abitali it was phenomenal um i think i have i also one. really liked it's really good i also really liked goodbye days by jeff centner uh the hate you give by angie thomas p.s i like you by casey west if you want to give another one of her books a chance i think it's really good um I'm looking at my shelf because it's this is literally all i've read all month long but i don't know what else anybody else throw them out in the chat room because i'm yeah Okay. Oh, I actually liked Invincible Summer, and I forget who that's by. Reads Invincible Summer. There's just a girl's body in a bikini on the cover. You'll know it when you see it on Goodreads. But it was really good. Is that part of a series? No, I don't think so. Let me pull up Goodreads. I don't think so. Um, okay, because I think I was like, talking about. Dude, I cried a lot, <laughs> but it was really good. I haven't read Geekerella. Somebody just said that. To, uh, I, haven't Talia, maybe you, I haven't, but I heard mm -hmm. a lot of good things about that one. Yeah. It's by Invisible Summer is by Hannah Moskowitz, and I does not look like it's part of a series. I'm going to check that one out. It was pretty good. I, guess I don't really do contemporary. I just mostly stick with my fantasy and science fiction. Mm -hmm. But I'll, I'll have to give that one a try because I have heard of. I tend to first. do a lot of historical fiction and LGBT lately. Shuffle repeat. I've heard of that one. It's Angela, well. I cannot wait for Lock and Key to get back around to me. That's out right now for one of the traveling book clubs, and I want to read it. The Amber Booksmore said she doesn't think fluffy contemporaries are for her. That's kind of how I am. I yeah, I read them like if, like I said, if this is there and it's for something to read, that's when I'll probably pick it up. But I'm more for fantasy, sci-fi, um, PNRs. I love PNRs; those are like my guilty pleasures. I I need somebody. Thank you. Oh, Angela, it hurt your soul. Good. I I that's weird, but like I I am I'm a crier, so I like when a book makes me cry, and I like certain books destroy like Jeff Sentner's books in general make me just ball my eyes out history is all you left me by adam yeah. silvera goodbye days by jeff zentner the serpent king by oh jeff my zentner. god history is all you left me is fantastic. it's so good but i've cried so hard i would say more happy than not but that's not like contemporary it's like part sci-fi ish mm -hmm. but it's really good but i like to cry too so if there's any like really good criers i also read two sarah Dessen audiobooks this month but i hated them both so I'm yeah, really nervous I, now about Sarah Dessen. Yeah, I tried to give her a try a long time ago. 
but that I think I, didn't work. it was someone like you or someone like me and then that summer and I don't like either of them yeah I'm more of a, a, a mood reader like if I want a cry worthy book I have to be in the mood for that let's see mm. I'm yeah, looking at comments. I know. I'm looking, like, I'm looking, I'm looking at, at recommendations. <laughs> Geek Gorilla, I didn't read. Fangirl, I was. Meh. I haven't read anything by. Who, who wrote Fangirl? Rainbow Row. Yeah, I have not read anything by her. I only read Eleanor and Park, which I did not like and found really disturbing and problematic. And I didn't like Fangirl. I, I didn't hate fangirl, but it was, like, about a girl in her, like, freshman year of college who was, like, so socially, like, just anxious that she couldn't even go to the cafeteria to eat dinner, and I can't get behind that. Like, that's just ridiculous to me. And then she also was, like, hardcore into writing fan fiction, which I've never read in my entire life or been, like, mm -hmm. into. So, like, it was hard for me to relate, but I can – and the family dynamic, like, her sister was awful, her dad. Like, I just didn't like any of it. And then – for Tome Topple, I read Carry On, which is, like, based on the fanfic from Fangirl. And that one was okay. <clears throat> yeah, I heard a lot of people, especially in the book, too, talking about Rainbow Row. And I just, I've never, never given her a try. Stop it. Are you serious right now? Angela, I will cry, girl. I will cry. <laughs> My kid just walked in and saw Julie's face and went, holy cow, I that's Julie. <laughs> Hi, Angela's daughter. Yeah, I read a lot more adult contemporary as well. I don't, I guess I don't read that. I was looking for like a, a new adult. Like I was looking for more contemporaries that were based in like college age or like first mm -hmm. careers, like right out of college. Finding any. Yeah, I, usually I have to get them from another parish or county because our library doesn't have a lot of new adult fiction. But I know like with YA, I stick to fantasy or science fiction, and then with adult is more contemporary. I hardly ever go yeah. for, um, partly because I feel like sometimes some adult books, uh, fantasy and science fiction, I, I get a little intimidated by them because of the complex world building with those. So I hardly ever venture off into that genre with adult. I love it. The more complex, the better. I'm fine with that. But I want like decently written sexy time and angst and tension. I don't want some girl ripping her pants, climbing into a rusty car. Like it doesn't, that does nothing for me. Yeah. I haven't. Just something about teenagers trying to do sexy time. That's just so. Yeah, no, I don't want to read that either, Lauren. Exactly. That's not what I meant. That's not, that's not what I was going for. I just. <laughs> Let's see. Rex for new adult. Oh, I have a couple of those. So. Oh, I think Lauren just caught out. I don't think I no, I, I'm oh, still no. here. Oh, okay. Um, I've been forced. I'm forced to use my cell phone at the moment because I was having trouble to get transferred over to my my uh, computer. But um, and so I'm at like 20% battery, and it decided that at 20% battery and low power mode, apparently your camera doesn't work. So okay. um, something new. Um, <laughs> Let's see. I, I read a lot of new adult contemporary. I can't even think of... I have it on my Kindle. My Kindle's like we're on the other side of our room right now. Oh, I'm like, I don't read any. I'm not against it. I just really... I have not read much Oh, Archer's all. voice is so good. I'm so glad you mentioned it, Davida. That was... That's a really nice um, contemporary book. And um, I think if you have Kindle Unlimited, it's on there. You can get that as well, but that's a nice contemporary book. Um, there's another one. It's about, I think it's called the Off Campus series. It's about hockey. I want to read that. They're so good. You need to get I want it. to read that. You need. I have not read um, the last one in the series. I, actually, I own it. I just hadn't got a chance to read it yet, but they are so good. Yeah, I want and to read also that. Also, my, my, my TBR. My favorite one is Pulse and Collide by Gail 
McHove, I think, or McHugh. I'm so okay. bad with names. But I will say this. If you read those, you need to have both books together because Pulse is the first one. And that ending will rip your heart. Out. And I had to get on the inner library alone. So I had to wait a good minute before I can get the second one. So I will say that if you read those, get them together. Good to know. I'm actually thinking that I'm reading a book right now that I got in my owl crate this month. And then after that, I think I might read Paper Princess, which I know is like more adult sexy tan. I thought you read that. Oh, no, you hauled it. I hauled it, but I haven't read it. I have, I have yeah, I've got the, I've got Paper Princess and Broken Prince, and I don't have the third one. So I'm hoping I don't have to binge them too quickly because I don't have the third one, but I might give those a try before the end of the month if I've got time. Yeah, I checked those out earlier this month. Well, the first one. I hadn't gotten the second or the third one. Let's see. I'm trying to like look yeah, Cora McCormack. Cora Cormack is good. I read her Losing It series. I've seen it. I haven't read it. Uh, Bookish Taylor, I love it so much. I'm, But I'm like 10 pages into it. Like I tried to start it today and I haven't really gotten into it that much. What um, was the Alcray book for this month? I'm not saying. Okay. Oh, I'll tell you. I didn't see her unboxing. I'll text you. Okay. I don't want to spoil people that haven't gotten it yet. So I'm like okay. not telling anybody. I um, <laughs> I was like, I'm my video, my unboxing is going up tomorrow, but I don't want to like, I hate spoiling people, so I want to let them like. Okay, cool. It's like impossible for me to read it on Instagram too, and not like update people because I'm like, I don't want to tell them. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's see. I like Paper Princess the best out of that series, Kelly. Oh, it went downhill after that. Well, I'm hoping that there's still at least like good guilty pleasure reads. Okay. So we'll have to, to see. Get my screen back up for the comments. And then okay. I need to. I still need to read A Quarter Wings of Ruin because I know there's going to be sexy time Holy in there. Holy God, you have not read. <laughs> I haven't read it yet. It's contemporary May. That's not a contemporary book. That's a fantasy okay. book. So I have to wait. I'm like, I think I have 25 percent left. I have been taking my time with this book. Julie, you need to. Oh. <laughs> I can't even talk about it because there are huge spoilers. In it. I can't even. Yeah, no, don't tell me anything. I will legitimately not, hunt you down. I'm not. It's just. Oh my God, read it. Hurry up. Do hurry up so you can read it. <laughs> Every five seconds, Julie, what does that mean? Um, Angela, I don't. I've never had coffee in my entire life. I've never tried coffee, so I did not eat that coffee candy. I'm scared of it. I just got Lord of Shadows in today. I hadn't even read Lady Midnight, but Lord of Shadows came in today. <gasps> Lady Midnight is so good. And I love Cassandra Clare. I read all of her Mortal Instruments. Well, I read them a long time ago, but I'm pretty sure if I read them now, I won't like them as much as I did before. You won't. Mortal Instruments is garbage. The Infernal Devices was okay, but Lady like Midnight that. is like everything you want her writing to be. It's like finally the book inside of that world that you wanted. It's mm -hmm. so much better than like her other... Oh, there's sexy time every five minutes. I'm about that, Amber. But I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like what's every five minutes? But like, sexy time every five minutes? Like, yes. Um, I'm. I want the Cassandra Clare books, though. I don't know. Can you see this back here? Yeah. Can you see this, these things? I want them in these books, like where the spines all match. Yeah. You should try. So they like line like up to make that skyline. So I, I don't know if they're gonna like eventually put out the. Um, Lord of Shadows and, and Lady Midnight in that version because I don't want to buy them until then so I've just been like getting them from the library but I think I might like go on Book Outlet and order the UK hardbacks because I want a hardback at least I don't or, I mean sorry I want paperback not a hardback and they only have them in the UK right now I think yeah I don't like to have hardbacks and then paperbacks within the same series I don't it's either. just I like to have them together and they don't look great not together. I know. I have all paperbacks and I want them to match oh, the spines on the those. I will, but I don't if know. I like the series. I will get it in hardback, paperback, whatever the heck I can get my hands on. Well, when it's like the, because oh, I'm looking up here, but I have a shelf at work and I have the Mortal Instruments and they make that little thing on the spine. I want them all to match with the. I've been checking on okay. Book Outlet too for the infernal devices and they only have book 
two and three, I think. They never have book one. Book one. It comes every now and then, so you gotta, like... I, I did that. I ordered, like, two and three, and then I waited, and one finally came on. Guys, I don't... Here's the level of commitment that I have to not buying books right now. I went on Book Outlet. I don't know why. It was a, it was a poor decision, but I did it. And they had the box set of books one and two of Harry Potter Illustrated Edition for $25. <laughs> Is it still there? <laughs> Probably I not. I did not buy it. I did not buy it, and I really wanted to. I don't know if it's still there. They had two. They only had two. Like, the quantity okay. was two. But I've seen them on there every now and then. So, like, I would go on to Book Outlet, like, every couple of days and be like is it back again is it back again so just know if you're looking for the illustrated editions they are on book outlet sometimes and they're stupid ridiculously cheap and i don't know how i didn't buy it but i didn't and now i'm kicking myself <laughs> yeah wow and then they had this 35 dollar if you spend 35 dollars you get free shipping and handling that was a that's a win-win i know now that now the shipping's not that bad the crazy one the moral instruments is garbage i know we we know this and yes, you're right. I haven't seen the TV show. The TV that show is out. better than the... I like the TV show better than the books because at least I don't have to read the books. But I just, again, it's one of those situations where it's like the the whole, the incesty thing, it's not necessary. It was an unnecessary plot device. Well, like, why? Why are you going to do that to people? Yeah. It's cool. That's not okay. We get enough of that with, like, Forbidden by Tabitha Saduma and yeah. Flowers in the Attic. Like, we get it. Like... But no, I haven't read Forbidden, but it got um, Forbidden is a special banded. kind of song. Not banded, that's not even a word. Banned from the library. <laughs> did it? <laughs> it did. It's still I got it. because, like, if a patron just you know wants it, like they come in, I'm looking for this book. You know, we still give it to them, but it's oh, not like okay. on the shelf. It's not out. Yeah, I I had it. I think I got it on Book Outlet, and then I read it, and then I unhauled it because I was like, okay, I I read it. I've been there. I've done that once. I'm not. I don't need to do that again. Yeah. Okay. Let's start looking through the comments. I was trying to have my screen where I could see everything at once, but it's not working. So. <laughs> You've never read Harry Potter. Why? Who ever read Harry Potter? Harry Jovita. Potter. Why? And you know, like, it. it's a lot of people who haven't read it. Read it. It's just one of those. Know, how? Everybody's read how do you, it. How do you grow up? And not read <laughs> read Harry Potter or have somebody read it to you. I mean, yeah. I'm sure there are even blind and deaf people out there that have bad experience. You'll love it. Actually, that's I'm how sorry. I got into it. I'm sorry I shouldn't say that. You know, uh, not to be antiquated and not to be mean to blind and deaf people at all, but. No, there's plenty of people that honestly haven't read Harry Potter before. Like, I know a lot of people yeah. that are really reading it for the first time this year and everything, mm -hmm. but you need to. You need to do it. Amber, it, this comment, I have no words, because the segue, talking about incest, I'm reading, I'm reading Game of Thrones. And it, here's the thing. She goes, don't normalize it. She, he's not. Fantastic segue. Thank he's you, not Amber. normalizing it. And secondly, my head also went to Game of Thrones. But it's just so well done in that book. Seriously. I've never read it. Like, that's, but that's not, I wouldn't call that normalizing incest. Like, because back then, no, it's not it, like, normalizing, and it's in a completely. It's not normalizing world. it. That and was even it was there normal. Think it's weird. Like, but no, I don't think so. Like back then, that was there. There was legitimately enough cases of sibling relationships back then that like it's not that far out of the norm for something like that to happen. It's just the mm -hmm. fact that like. Philippa Gregory or George R. R. Martin, who chooses to actually then write about it and makes everybody uncomfortable. Like, we get it. Like, we, nobody's, at least I hope nobody's doing that still. But, like, mm -hmm. it's a thing that happened. Yeah. People I've did that. Well, yeah. And my point is within all, the Game of Thrones world, even people there are looking at incest as being odd or they're getting to yeah. the point of thinking of it as odd. So it's not, they're about getting to that. At yeah. least it's, it's, it's a, you know, they're discussing this relationship as a relationship, not necessarily a good relationship, but at least they love each other and try to make it a functional relationship. 
I love that. I love that. While term. at the same time, everybody else are like, "This is weird. You guys are so messed up in the head for so many reasons." Yeah. <laughs> Bookish Taylor said it was it was frowned upon. Like, <laughs> I just love that term. I'm frowning upon you. And it was. I mean, it was frowned upon, but it happened. That stuff happened. So, well, you started a debate, Amber. <laughs> um. But yeah, no, it was. It went from Mortal Instruments to Flowers in the Attic to Forbidden to Game of Thrones. But oh my god, Flowers and in the Attic! That is a book club win, friends. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anytime you can circle back around to Flowers in the Attic, you have won. I've never read Flowers. In- I've seen the movie, but I've never. I haven't even seen the movie. I've, Listen, I'll tell they, you right I think now. I redid it too. Twelve-year-old Julie read Flowers in the Attic, and it effed me up something hard. That was that was a that was a serious book. <laughs> yeah. Which you didn't know at twelve. Like VC Andrews wrote books I could read at twelve, and then I picked that one up, and I was like, "Well, oh, nope." Mm-hmm. Funny, the funny thing is, even back then, I think VC Andrews Flowers in the Attic was supposed to be a young adult type of book. They just didn't say by young adult; they meant like seventeen. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we picked a dud this month, guys, but hopefully next month's book is going to be a lot better because I've heard nothing but good things about it. So I've run into a lot of people whose opinions I trust that say it's one of their favorite books. So I'm hoping for the best next month and excited to continue to diversify the kinds of books that we are reading, which is fun. So we kind of run trying to add in a whole bunch of different things so that we can get exposure to different kinds of books. So we're going to try a uh, sci-fi. I'm excited. I'm really excited for this one. I am too. I am too. I'm going to throw it out in the chat room again just so we have it. Yeah, I think I may have to get it. If I don't buy it, I probably have to interlibrary loan it because I'm pretty sure our system doesn't have it. I got to look at my system and see if we do or not because I don't own it either. But um, I do really, I do really want to read it. Yeah, it, it just sounds good, and I'm not even reading any some not well um, reviews or whatnot because I just want to go in it blindly. Yeah, I don't know a ton about it, um, but L. Smith asked if there's diversity in this next book, and there is. I do know for a fact there is diversity in the next one, so um, we're gonna see. Okay, well, anybody else have any more comments or questions about the dud? <laughs> I've got nothing left on the dud. <laughs> All I can say is the fact that I have pneumonia is probably more exciting than the book was. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad some people liked it. And even those that didn't like it, like, and I, you know, it, it wasn't the worst thing I've ever read in my life. It's just, I wasn't happy with it, you know, so. Save Me the Walls is the worst exactly. thing I've read in my life. That was pretty bad. No, I feel like I read I read a couple worse ones since then. Like I've read some that I DNF'd that I just finished. I couldn't handle it. So at least I read that. Yeah, I think if you read that, you can get through anything. Uh, hey, anything, and at least I Saved the Walls had a story that went along with it that we were like, "What? What?" And we knew exactly <laughs> who to blame for everything too. There were like four <laughs> people. <laughs> This we have nobody to blame. No, it's just kind of meh. So, yeah, that's okay. We're gonna hope for the best next month, and we'll just keep chatting in the buddy in the buddy chat. Fingers you know, crossed. Group. <laughs> yeah, we'll just keep chatting about it. Yep. Well, thank you all for joining us today. Talk to you later. And I hope you all have fun. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, guys. You guys make it worth it. It's so much yeah. more fun when we get to interact with you guys in the chat room. So hopefully, uh, and don't be afraid to give us your opinions. Yes, because yeah, we may read I, books that you know, like this one we all hate, but some of you may like it as well. Yeah. L. Smith, we have not found a date that works for all three of us yet for the end of June or for you know that far into June. So we're gonna wait and see because summer gets busy for everybody. So we're gonna try to plan. Mm-hmm. We'll, you know, we'll let you know as soon as we can in the buddy read group, but we don't know yet. Um, and then what else was I going to say? Oh, we have decided that after a long, the long, a long way to a small and angry planet, right? Not the, it's a long way. Um, 
for the month of July, we will be opening it up to your guys' vote. So start thinking about what you may want us to be reading yes. in July. And we will um, we'll probably do a couple of different polls, take the winners, and then, you know, vote from there. So. Yep. <clears throat> Okay then. Well, I hope you all have a great night if you're over the across the water. A good day. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time. Yay. Bye guys. See you guys next time. Bye. Bye.